All right, YouTube, it's the Choice HPTV coming to you out of Detroit. Listen, we finna talk about Tiffany Cross for a minute and uh, what's going on in the media. Because I think there's a lot of delusional people in the black community. Now, a lot of y'all ain't gonna like this video. You know what I mean? Because we're gonna take a hard look at these gender politics that's being played in our community. Now, Tiffany, Tiffany Cross, Angela Rye, and a few others, they were hired by these major media, media companies, given these jobs to be pundits. But their job was not to criticize the white man. Their job was to push the company narrative and to browbeat black men. So I'm going to give you an example of what happens when the sisterhood and the sisters attack the white man. Because when they attack the white man and he starts attacking them back they say racism but they initiated the attack and in this and then in this clip she gets fired because they told her that her commentary as it related to tucker carson and even their uh opponents was racism i'm gonna let you look at the clip first this is for educational purposes and commentary under 1976 copyright act check this out closely because we've been seeing a lot of this lately. America's national religion, it may surprise you to learn that open race hate forms much of the substance of that channel's programming. And when we say race hate, we're not referring to the subtle coded variety. You want border security? You're giving your kids piano lessons? You like Shakespeare? You believe in the SAT? You must be a racist. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the kind of race hate you cannot mistake for anything else. The kind where people just come out and announce, I hate this race of people, and here's why I do. It's hard to believe that anything like that is happening right now on American television, but it is, out in the open. And the most amazing and the most creepy part of all is that no one is saying anything about it. It's all but ignored. And honestly, we had no idea it was going on either until we started getting texts from people, are you watching this? Can you believe this? So we tuned in. Apparently on the left, what you're about to see is considered completely normal, even good. And that should worry you deeply. You don't want to live in Rwanda, but on MSNBC, they're already there. Now, you probably knew about Joy Reid, the race lady who's been fixated on race hate for years now. But MSNBC has a new host, someone called Tiffany Cross, who hosts a show called The Cross Connection. Here's a selection. Many of us have seen the dangers when powerful white people decide they want something, they annex it. And they've never had a problem replacing the people who stand in their way. All right. I just want you to see how she's going to start. Now, she, she, she's forgetting that she works for white people. She said powerful white people. You know what I mean? She works for white people. She's supposed to be pushing their company line. She's not supposed to criticize them. That comes with her job. That's who she works for. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's just like this delusion that a lot of sisters have. They think they can attack black men, attack white men, even their employers. They go against their communities, their constituents, everything. Then they say it's racism. Then they say it's misogyny. Then they say people, women haters or whatever. Listen to her language as it deals with her bosses. And don't get on here and say, I'm a Trump supporter and I'm MAGA. None of that because I'm not. I see things very clear. But I want you to pay attention to her language. How, how she expresses her stuff herself. We see American white people are, are going crazy. They're going, they're resorting to violence. 
This is literally what conservative white folks do when they don't get their way. They turn violent. White people deputizing themselves in some position of authority to have jurisdiction over their life when they need to mind their blanking business. All right, guys, so we got to talk about washed up Tiffany Cross. And I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Tiffany Cross. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are. We cover her quite a bit. Shout out to Greg Foreman. This is his channel, The uh, Black Conservative Perspective. You know, I'm doing a reaction to his video. You know what I mean? And um, listen, take your emotions out of it. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed that? When people get a position, they kind of get big headed and then they start going at everybody else. She said she was fired because they didn't want her going at Tucker Carson. But they didn't want her going at Tucker Carson because his commentary and his following is bigger than hers. So she was punching up which wasn't good for the network or the ratings. If, if, if her commentary was good for the ratings, they would have never fired her. So now she's on YouTube with Angela Rye, another one that they fired. And their commentary is, it's like they so pro-black, but really they pro-position, they pro-job. They're not pro-black community. Never do you see them advocating for the black community. You see them always jockeying for positions always jockeying for ratings, clicks, and views. When she still had a show on MSNBC, okay? This lady was like Joy Reid Light. That clearly was her angle, and she spent a lot of time on her show uh, talking trash about white people, talking about white supremacy, racism. You guys know what the Wolf Revolutionaries love to talk about on these liberal airwaves. That's what she did until her show eventually got canceled because nobody was really watching her show despite her claims. Uh, her show was not that popular, right? And she got fired after being accused of essentially mishandling the company card on trips where she would pay for luxury hotels as if she was actually really a superstar, right? And she's not, but this is what she was accused of doing, uh, allegedly. Are y'all noticing the theme, Fanny Willis, Cantrell in Louisiana, uh, Ann Kelly, uh, you know, all of them is, is getting caught up with these budgets and these trips and these nice hotels. You know what I mean? And then when they get caught up like that, they say it's racism. For real. Companies in the business of making money. And if you taking a company card and using company cars for luxury where you could fly economy or something else, eventually they're going to step to you because you're messing with the bottom line. At the end of the day, they're in it to make money. Because you didn't think they was racist when they was hiring you. They got racist when they fired you because your commentary was directed at their allies, but their allies are still their cousins and their brothers and their sisters. You know what I mean? We always think that, well, a lot of us think we can pick a side in white America and win when the only way we're going to ever win if we pick ourselves, our own side, our own interests. You know what I mean? We, you know what I mean? We, it's like I said in the other video, it's like we always trying to choose between two masters instead of being the masters of our own destiny. She was told by the higher ups, hey, you need to stop attacking other hosts on other networks that have more clout and star power than you do because you're not going to be able to win by going at them, okay? They're going to destroy you, right? They didn't want the network to get embarrassed by Tiffany Cross trying to punch above her weight. Like, for example, trying to go after people like Tucker Carlson. So 
regardless of the reason why she was fired, right? She was fired. She was let go. And, of course, uh, she has to come out and try to now explain why she was fired um, because she has a new podcast uh, with Angela Reed, who's also a washed-up liberal media personality, and Andrew Gillum, who is a crackhead that tried to run for governor of Florida. I think one of the best things that Trump did was endorse DeSantis to give him the victory over that guy, okay, because Florida would not be the free state that it is without Trump. So without further ado, I actually want to go ahead and roll the clip of Miss Tiffany Cross uh, explaining why she got fired on her new podcast to try to promote her podcast. Um, and of course, nobody should be surprised in regards to some of the reasoning behind why she's claiming she got fired. Take a look. I was invited to appear on Morning Joe. So, um, Joe Scarborough, I'm sure y'all have watched Joe Scarborough before. In the segment right before I was coming on, Joe Scarborough started saying that he wanted the Republican Party to get their act together. He didn't want his country run by some of the leftists who were running countries like Portland. And he called out some other uh, municipalities that this was right after the height of Black Lives Matter. And so uh, he said, we ought to get it together. And the Republican Party is failing. Donald Trump turned the party racist. So when I was introduced, I obviously had a, a lot to say about that, that there's an unspoken rule that you're not supposed to disagree with Joe, but I didn't get that memo. Even if I had, I don't know how much attention I would pay to it. And so when it came time for me to speak, I uh, went through very specific policies, um, talked about Ronald Reagan, talked about um, George Bush, and made the point that even though they may have been more articulate, their policies were just as damaging to black folks. Well, after I got off the air, he continued to talk about it. Uh, he was very upset, apparently. And so when he left set, uh, he was beside himself. That's how it was described to me. I was told from several reputable sources, including a talent agent, two anchors, and another executive at the network, that he left set and went into the president's office, the president of, of the network, to complain about my segment complained that I disagreed with him, said that I called him racist, and suggested that I should not be Joy Reid's successor uh, to get the show. I want you all to know, every single week, from the start of my show to the very last show I did, it was a battle. Every single week, it was a battle to cover things that I wanted to talk about. Um, the network's philosophy was Trump, 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 Trump. Um, they wanted me... The network's philosophy was push the company line and save your criticism for black men. That was your job. You signed on to criticize black men. You got so comfortable with criticizing and tearing down the brothers that you thought that you could go at them. Have you noticed her and Fannie Willis, they get caught up in this mess and the first thing they say, is this racism? They don't know what racism is. Obviously. Obviously. Because had you not messed up with that car and had you followed the company line and do what they hired you for, you would have kept your job. But you, you thought you was more important than you are to them. And this is why you're on YouTube with a podcast instead of a major network. Facts. To be part of the echo chamber, and I fought as hard as I could. When I would fight these battles, I know y'all know exactly what I mean. I was spoken to in the most condescending ways. I mean, anything from being told the definition of news, me with my 20 plus year career in news and broadcast and television, I would have somebody sit across from me and explain to me how news worked. Um, I had my intelligence questioned. In fighting these battles, I can't lie, I made some enemies. Um, yeah. I held the line. I didn't acquiesce. Because for me, what was the point in having this platform if I'm going to show up and spit out uh, some vanilla granola boringness and hope that one day, maybe the white man will let me host his Today Show? I, I've just never seen that happen. I have never seen anybody be rewarded for acquiescing to the comfort of white folks. But one night, uh, Tucker Carlson dedicated the top of his show to me. After this, the network did not issue a statement. 
uh, the way they had for some of my white colleagues who had also been targeted by MAGA extremists. Instead, network executives spoke to me and instructed me that I could not respond to Tucker Carlson at all. Then they began to scrutinize my show. Every little thing I wrote, every little thing. You see how she refers to her bosses as white people? The white man, the white man. You mean your bosses? And then it turns out it was a sister that fired her. But the point is, she made her career tearing black men down. If you look at some of her footage, how condescending she talked to the black men as a collective. I'm telling you, she got so used to talking reckless to us that she started talking reckless to them. And they set her down. Now, she's looking for the support of the sisterhood along with Fannie Willis and them because she's no, ain't no black man gonna support her. For years, you made your bread and butter or telling them, you know, your bosses that we didn't even know who to vote for, that we didn't have enough sense or political education to make decisions. That's what you said about black men. You said we don't have the knowledge and education to make a decision about who to vote for, what policies benefit us or not. And you took the mantle on that. But then you started beefing with them. The illusion of inclusion always gets y'all. She forgot she black. I guess she got her Negro wake up call. That's all it is. That's all they get. And they'll say, if you don't support them, oh, you supporting them, white man, and you this, that, and other, or you a, a Trump support. No, we watched you. We listened to your diatribe. We listened to how you, tur how you try to tear us down every time your bosses wanted us to get in line to follow behind the Democrats. Thanks. I said before the show, after the show, after the show, it was always here's all the things that you said, here's all the things that you did wrong. The ratings didn't lie, but according to them, people must just be tuning in to criticize me because that's all they had was criticism. Never thanks for doing a good job. Never thanks for bringing so many new viewers to the network. Uh, this was four days before midterms and one day before my show was going to air. We had booked an exclusive sit down with Stacey Abrams, who as you all know, was in the fight for her life running for governor at that time. That morning, I got a call from the president of the network saying they would not be renewing my contract, which was up in a month. She was partly responsible for Stacey Abrams losing because she came out in the middle of that election and condemned a large sector of the black community by saying they didn't have enough sense to determine for themselves what benefited them and they should just fall in line. She talking about somebody was condescending to her. She was one of the most condescendingest people at MSNBC. For real, go back and look at how she used to talk. Month, and that my viewers would not even be given the courtesy or respect of me being able to sign off or have a final show. Uh, I think it's important that you all know when that happens, it suggests to other people in the yeah. industry that this person is so unhirable that we could not trust her with a live mic. And I was never given an official reason for why they canceled my show, but it was pretty obvious that I had drawn the ire of white conservatives, which even made some white liberals uncomfortable. So I had to go. Never mind that millions of people found my voice to reflect theirs. Let me stop there. She just admitted that she not only offended the white conservatives, she offended the white liberals because <laughs> she had already offended all of us. So, hey, you know. Despite me not saying anything at the time other than to issue a very politely worded and gracious statement, mostly for my viewers, 
um, a statement in which did not attack the network at all uh, or say anything bad about them, the network began attacking me. They planted yeah. hit pieces in the press. Um, the president of the network began a bizarre unhinged tour where she was on damage control. I don't know what she was trying to do, um, but it was filled with outright lies, uh, including showing up on the set of The View. It's very strange for the president of a competing network to show up at another network and talk directly to their talent. That just doesn't happen. Yeah, so you see, Nate, you heard that, okay? That's a fascinating segment for a variety of reasons, right? Because she kind of exposes NBC in ways that I agree with and in other ways that I think are kind of silly. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, Tiffany Cross is responsible for her own firing. But like a lot of these women, they don't want to take any type of accountability or responsibility when it comes to their role and why they get fired, right? Why they lose their jobs, okay? The one thing I do agree with Tiffany Cross on that she did say is the fact that MSNBC is obsessed with Trump, right? And asking their host to come out here and to obsess with Trump every single day, honestly, is the reason why Trump is as popular as he is right now, right? This is the reason why Trump is leading in the poll. It's actually the, the main reason, right? The attacks from the, the mainstream liberal media and from the Democrats, the politically charged persecutions. Yeah, that's why Trump is finding so much success. So I do think that she's right about that. And I would be super frustrated as well, too, if, you know, I had executives telling me that, hey, you got to come out here and talk about Trump every single day, right? You got to go on a Trump deranged rant every single day, like <laughs> Joe Scarborough tends to do and all the other posts on that network tend to do. Yeah, I'll be annoyed by that too, right? But I think that's like the only thing in her commentary that I agree with because honestly, what she's trying to do here is she's trying to blame race because when all else fails, just play the race card, right? I got fired because of racism, because of white conservatives upset, because of Joe Scarborough. It's the white man, right? The white man is the reason why I lost my job, even though the person responsible for her being fired is actually a black woman, okay? Rashida Jones, who is the president of MSNBC. Sound like Fannie Willis. Fannie Willis say it's the white man, but it was her lover's black wife that got on attack. It was another black woman. Just like here. I bet y'all didn't know Tiffany Cross was fired by a black woman. Who she didn't respect or wouldn't listen to. She tell us she wouldn't listen to. She told she told you they told her what they wanted her to do. They wanted her to attack Trump, tear the black man down, you know what I mean? And push the company line. That's it. Don't do nothing else. That's what we paying you to do. You see how many times she said they stepped in and criticized her and told her, you know, so obviously, you know how many times they was giving her an opportunity not to be fired? She actually believed that her position in that network was more important than the network itself. You see, fire Tiffany Cross, okay? She's a black woman that works for MSNBC, so she's probably liberal. And she fired Tiffany Cross. But yet Tiffany Cross is coming out here and trying to blame everybody else. It's the white man's fault, right? Instead of just owning up to the fact that, hey, I did something that they asked me not to do, right? Your commentary was not in line with the standards for MSNBC. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. That's a super low bar, right? I mean, you, you really have to be off the rails in order to have commentary that's not up to their standards, okay? Because MSNBC, in my opinion, uh, damn near supports domestic terrorism from far leftists in this country, okay? But her commentary was so off the wall. It was so overtly racist against whites that conservative media, people like Tucker Carlson, picked up on it, and he ran an amazing piece where he essentially compared uh, Tiffany Cross's commentary to the hate and vitriol that was spewed across the Rwandan airways uh, during the Rwandan genocide, right? So uh, that commentary from Tucker Carlson is essentially what ended Tiffany Cross's career because she wanted to get in a back and forth with Tucker Carlson and the network said, no, 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 you're shooting above your weight, right? Like this guy is in a whole nother category 
you should not attack him. And I don't blame the network for telling Tiffany Cross, don't attack Tucker Carlson, right? Don't attack a guy who you're clearly not on the same level of when it comes to commentary because you're going to lose every single time, okay? That piece from Tucker Carlson on Tiffany Cross was probably one of the most vicious pieces that I've ever seen in my life in regards to taking down a liberal media uh, hoax, right? Because, I mean, you, you have just straight up overt examples of anti-white commentary being spewed on MSNBC's airways. Commentary that, again, if you had a white man saying these exact same things they were saying about white people on MSNBC about black folks, no chance, right? Absolutely zero chance, right? They, they would have been fired a long time ago. But the only reason Tiffany Cross was able to get away with it is because she's a black woman. However, it was so overt, it was so racist, it was so hateful that even MSNBC said, this is too much for us, right? This is too overt, okay? Which it really blows my mind why Joy Reid still has a job because Joy Reid is in that territory as well too. Now, I'm not sure nowadays has she calmed down. I haven't really reacted to Joy Reid like that. Uh, the latest video I reacted to Joy Reid was the Iowa caucus where, you know, she was essentially crying and whining about white Christians, <laughs> essentially saying that they're the reason why Nikki Haley uh, didn't get more votes in the caucus. I'm going to end here so I don't play this whole video. But the gist of this is, it's a wake-up call. Because, like, now you trying to team up with Angela Rye. Angela Rye took a picture on Instagram, a thirst trap picture. Everybody know what a thirst trap is. Cuomo commented on the picture. She waited and said she didn't like the comment and she claimed racism and she was so fake about it because she didn't bring it up until after she got fired for something else. And all he did is comment on the picture. If you, if, uh, if a woman, if you take a picture on Instagram for hundreds of thousands of people to view, a real thirst trap picture, what kind of comments do you want? If you get on there with underwear on, a bikini on, and you know what I mean, you creating this thirst trap, what comments are you looking for? Are you looking for the comments that we are get to a Coretta Scott King, a Betty Shabazz, or a Winnie Mandela, or some other woman with dignity? You posted the picture. He made a comment. You waited until you got in some other trouble and then you start saying Cuomo did this and you know what it didn't get no play because he commented on your picture I mean y'all done got so delusional that you forget y'all black I remember when Ice Cube went to tea with the, the Queens or whatever and he was talking to Vivica Fox now and he said, we're going, we're trying to put a bill together for black people. She said, is there something in there for black women? He said, aren't black women black people? They said, no, we are a separate class. And they actually believe it. They think, and in their mind, they really think that they threaten black men when they try to be upward mobile in white America. That's not a threat to us. Because we know they're not going to put you in a position of power over them. You're going to always be subservient to them. You're going to always be somebody that they use. You are not put there to uplift, liberate, free, educate black people. Your whole job title is about tearing a black man down and being an attack dog for the enemies. So that you could do just what you're doing. It was the race car. It was the race car. How? A black woman fired you. Why won't you say that in the interview? Because you want us to sympathize with you. You think, you know, it's like they always leave you and then come back. You know what I mean? Like how, like how Jeezy tried to do after he thought Jenny Mai was so much better as a wife than his other baby mamas or some other black woman.
He wanted an Asian woman. What did he think he was getting? He married somebody who already thought that she was better than him. She said she liked her dark meat on the side in the play. Come on now. You know what? This is so ridiculous when you look at it. That as a community, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to rally behind you and put you in another position so you can criticize us and tell us how ignorant and slow we is. Because somebody didn't gave you a microphone. You just got your Negro wake up call, just like anybody else would have when they think they're more important than they really are. I'm going to end on that note. Choice HPTV. Keep your head on the swivel. Sign out Detroit. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace.